This morning church we will continue in our study of the book of James. We have um, uh, quite a few scriptures to to look at in James chapter 4 and then also uh, touch upon James chapter 5 in last Sunday uh, pastor um talked about the desires for pleasure how in the body of Christ or in this particular congregation it seemed like there were people who were fighting and warring with one another and uh, that was really motivated by their evil desires so now we will begin fr- from verse 6 in light of what he has already been saying so far no he said that we must not um, we must not act out of our fleshly desires that is something that he pointed out instead of that he is instructing the people to receive more grace from god is there any dearth when it comes to god's grace no there isn't any dearth at all so god is able to give more grace but who does he give more grace to the scripture says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. James asks the believers focus on the Lord because who is it who can lift us up? It is God himself. So exaltation comes from the Lord and therefore our eyes must be fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. When we humble ourselves, scriptures tell us that it is God who will lift us up. Then how do we deal with these verses in James chapter 4? Do not judge your brother, don't take God's place. Now we have to understand that James is speaking this in the context of the competition which existed in that particular body. Let's move on. Verse 13 here. For the self-reliant, he says, we don't even know what tomorrow brings. In other words, he's just calling the self-reliant to be dependent on God. Should a believer think about tomorrow and plan for tomorrow? The answer is yes. The Bible does teach us to be um you know prudent and wise in the way we go about the affairs of this life. James concludes no in this manner and he suddenly seems to skip over to a different subject in uh, James chapter 5 here so we'll move on to James chapter 5 so the first part uh, of James chapter 5 from verses 1 through 6 now this is where it seems like James is really rebuking the rich now who are these rich people that James is talking about people who are really uh, moving with injustice and these are the kind of rich people that he is speaking to and he is letting them know the day of judgment is coming and uh, he says what's going to happen on that day he says your riches are corrupted your garments are moth eaten so basically he's saying all the riches that have been accumulated will be of no use and even the expensive garments that these rich people own you know they will be moth eaten and he goes to the extent in verse 3 to say that your gold and silver are corroded now james switches he was so far addressing the rich folks and now he's addressing the oppressed he's calling the oppressed and he's he's recognizing the pain that the oppressed is going through and you know he he lets them know I know you're going through a difficult time but this is what I want to tell you he repeats it twice he says be patient why why should they be patient know that the lord's coming is near grumbling murmuring complaining very clearly um in in god's perspective that is not something which he likes in continuation of uh, this encouragement to those who were oppressed uh he he says Okay come on you you can add another thing don't complain don't swear uh, be patient and all of that now also pray because when we pray what happens we are waiting upon the lord and this there are there are many things that happen when we pray god releases strength into our inner man as we wait on the lord in our difficult times 
there is a divine exchange taking place you know god's strength is filling up and you know covering up the weaknesses which we carry within us and so we must pray but pray with perseverance pray until we see something happen and the last two verses here suddenly you know there's a change of uh, he's changed the topic and he's letting the believers know that there is a possibility of um, someone who's following god to even wander away we should be there to help people who have wandered away to come back and align themselves to the truth of god's word